and welcome to another round of sports views. Tonight I am reviewing the 2020 Scotiabank CONCACAF League round of 16 and reacting to my predictions or telling you what I got right, how many I got right, how many I got wrong, and predicting the quarterfinal round of the CONCACAF League. We will start off with reacting to the whole round of 16. First match was Forge FC versus Tauro FC. Tauro won. Forge FC 2 got this one right, said Forge would win. Forge went down to Panama fighting. Went down to fight. They didn't want to quit. They went down there knowing they could get it done. They believed they could get it done. Scored an early goal, then Tauro came back, scored one, then they kept it 1-1 for the rest of the game. Got a penalty right at the end, and then Daniel Crutzen slots it to put Forge through, deservingly so. They were easily the better team in that game. One defensive lapse made it go longer than it should have, or made it less obvious than it should have been, but hey, what happens, happens. So, so far, 1-0 on my predictions. Second match, Marathon won, Antigua GFC won, Marathon wins on penalties 4-3. Antigua sc scores early, Antigua scores early, they go down a man, Marathon scores, but good on Antigua, probably helps because it was raining and all that. The conditions were horrible because of Hurricane Eta. It was Eta. Iota was the last one. It was Eta first, yeah. Hurricane Eta wasn't great. And I'm the hurricane expert guy. I love tracking hurricanes. Why did I... They went basically the same way, yeah. 2020 is crazy. But Hurricane Eta, the effects of it at that point was a tropical storm. Probably helped the game stay close for Antigua, but it goes to penalties. Maraton is more clinical. They do better. They go through. So I was wrong about that. One and one on my predictions. The next match. Alianza won. Motagua won. Motagua wins on penalties. Four to three as well. Alianza did not play like they thought they should. They did not play well. They did not play like they cared. They played like they thought they were the team to beat. They did not play with urgency, with belief or care. They got the goal, and then they just, they weren't great all night. Matagua got a goal to tie it up, and then they got it to penalties and won there, and deservedly so. Alianza was not great. They were trash in that game. They were trash in that game, and they deserved to lose. So, one to two on my predictions. The next match, the fourth match, halfway through, Waterhouse versus Arca High. Waterhouse won, Arca High three. Arca High, crazily, crazily enough, crazily, crazy enough, they stomp out Waterhouse. That is not what I expected. This was the first surprise of the round. Arca High came in and was like, oh, nobody believes that we could win. Nobody believes that we're good enough. All right, Waterhouse ain't that good, at least in their heads, and well, they proved themselves right. They shellacked them, slapped them around, and went through. So, Arca High goes through, and I was wrong about that one as well. One to th one and three on my predictions, but it gets better. Saprissa, four, Municipal, one. Saprissa dominated Municip Municipal. Municipal. They dominated Municipal. Seriously, they were not great. Now, it doesn't help that they were basically told, hey, you got to take more coronavirus tests. Hey, we're going to make you wait, knowing you're ready. The Ministry of Health, check them out. Guess what? Wow. Saprissa did what they did. They're the champions for a reason of last year's CONCACAF League. They're the champions for a reason. They took Municipal back out behind the woodshed and took him out easily. So now I'm two and three on my predictions. And the next game, Olympia six, Managua nil. Olympia just took their lunch money. They didn't care. They kept on going. They just kept slapping them around. Managua wasn't great. They upset Foz. We probably expected this to happen. A lot of us did. Olympia was going to show they were a two classes above. Not just a class above, two classes above. Hell, two and a half because... Foz was the better team than Managua, and while uh, upset happened, 
So two and a half classes above. They just slapped them around. And I did a live stream for that match. And it was a great one. It did well. Slapped them around. So that means I'm three and three on my predictions. The two matches that were just played last night, which made this video wait almost a month to come out. CS hit a Diano nil. Ray Alistelli won. Ray Alistelli wanted the upset. They went to get it. They scored the goal, and they just shut out Herediano. They were like, okay, that's what you want to do? Okay, boom. We're going to get that goal. We're going to shut you down. We're going to get the upset, and they did. Great great game by Ray Alistelli. One, one goal, but that's all they needed. Herediano did not look good last night. Estelle looked better. They were the deserving winners. So that means I'm three and four in my predictions for this round. And finally, Alahuense won. San Francisco FC nil. Same kind of story, but Alahuense got the goal. And they just defended. The first half, no goals. Around the halfway mark in the second half, they score. One goal. That's it. They defend. They're like, we're going to put this one away. San Francisco ain't really targeting us. Ain't really trying us. We're going to put this one away. Defend. Because that's all we got to do. And they did. They didn't really want to stomp them out. They just went and did what they had to do. And they did. And that makes my predictions 4-4. Four and four. I batted 500 in these this round's predictions. But I think I'm going to do better in the quarterfinals. The first match of the quarterfinals on December 1st is Arca High of Haiti versus Forge FC of Canada. And I'm going with Forge FC. If they beat Taurol, if they beat Municipal Emanuel, if they beat Antigua last year, and then they beat Olympia in the home leg last year, even though they lost the tie, Forge has way more CONCACAF experience against way better teams. Arca High is not going to beat Forge FC. Forge will beat them decisively. 3-1, 2-0, something around those lines. Maybe 4-1, something around those lines. Forge wants the CONCACAF spot, and they know this is the easier way to get it. Because the other two ways they could get it is beat the loser of Marathon, Saprissa, and the play-in. And in a play-in, I don't like their chances. In the semifinals, I actually do. But we'll get to that when we get to that point. They would have to beat them. Or in the Canadian Championship, they have to beat Toronto FC. Well, actually, they'd probably want that one more than a Marathon, Saprissa, the loser of that. Because Toronto does not look good right now. And we don't know what they're going to look like at the start of next year because they're probably going to play the Canadian Championship in January. But Forge will still be playing meaningful games if everything goes right. But that means they'd already be in the Champions League. So it probably would just be for the continuity of the trophy. But in seeding. But we don't know. But Forge will probably go through. This is their easiest path. The Toronto path still isn't their easiest. And they would go through the next match. CD Maraton versus Saprissa. I say Saprissa goes through. It won't be as much of a shellacking as the Municipal game was. But Maraton will lose to Saprissa 2-1, to 3-2. And Saprissa will show they're still the champions for a reason. And go on predicted to have a date with Forge FC in the semifinals. The losers would be Arca High, Maraton, which they would be playing in a play-in. Sounds like next week, or the week after the first. The week after the first, which is two weeks from now. But the semifinals wouldn't be played then, it sounds like. It sounds like. And then, the next match. Ray Alistelli versus Alahuense. Alahuense, I think, is going to win that match. Because they, ups they did not get upset. Ray Alistelli upset Herediano. Alahuense is the better team. They're the bigger club. They are the better club. They're getting their players back from suspensions, injuries, COVID. At this point, they should win. I know it's a way, but they should win. Alahuense goes through. And then finally, the fourth match of the week, which is a match that I'm just doing a live stream for. Arca High Forge, I'm doing a live and a RSR for on Tuesday the 1st. Olympia Matagua, I'm just doing a live stream on the 2nd. 
but I'm still streaming it because I know this is the biggest match of the round and with the biggest fan bases because, you know, two Mas Grandes, especially Olympia. And the Olympia Managua one was pretty good, so we'll see what this does. And Matagua Comunicaciones did pretty well, so we'll see what that does. But I think Olympia will go through. They're still a class above Matagua. I think Olympia is going to win three to one and go through. They'll show their they'll show their quality. They'll show they're better, and they'll show that they're still a force to be reckoned with. And they still have a chance in the Champions League as well at the end of December. So we will see that. So that means the play-in, the semifinal for the left side of the bracket will be Alajuense versus Olympia. The play-in will be at least predicted, not confirmed, but predicted. Ray Alistelli, Motagua play-in. And we, hopefully, I'm right about all that. I think I'll go at least three out of four. There'll be an upset somewhere. But if I go four out of four, that would be great. Better than this week. So, or this round. So, with that said, on my predictions for the round of 16, I went four for four. Bat 500. Wasn't bad. Not as good as the preliminary round. But we'll do better in the quarterfinals, I'm sure. So, if you like this video, like it, share, subscribe, you know what it is. Tell all your friends tomorrow I have another recap predictions video. The first round recap of the MLS Cup playoffs and the conference semifinals preview predictions tomorrow on Thanksgiving Day, no less. So, with that said, I'm Ryan and I'm out. Peace!